we're going to look at how to install a simple solar setup. So James Freeman and all you other adventurers, auditors, freedom lovers, and people who love to be independent, this one's for you. And I thought, wow, that's nice. That's, that's nice. Muy bien, Payeso. Muy bien. <sighs> Guacala. Are you going to put that away now? So breathe. Oh, let's put that on a truck because that won't be terrifying at all. Hey guys, Gavin Syme here. Today's video is going to be very practical in nature as we take a look at how to be off grid and independent, whether in your camper or your camper van or your truck or your house, it all works pretty much the same. So we don't have to be reliant. The first thing I want to do so that power is always working, I don't have dead batteries and everything just works is have a solar panel because it makes all the difference in the world. First of all, let's go up here. And I'm just gonna crawl up. We always walk gently on these RV roofs. They are not very tough. You're gonna buy some solar panels, like these little 100 watt panels right here. And then you're gonna buy solar panel brackets. These are all pretty standard things. You can Amazon them, but I'll put some links in comments for this. Bottom line, you're gonna get panels, brackets. Usually they come with connectors, like an MC4 connector. I believe that's what these are. There's some different variants of the MC connector. I believe MC4 is our current one here. So they come with leads, positive and negative leads coming off of each panel. This is a 12 volt, whereas some panels are 18 volts, some panels are 24 volts, et cetera. And you can actually control that up here too. So I could run these in series, right? I've got wires coming out of the panel. I could run those in series, which basically means I cross the positive and negative from one panel to the other. And then I take the other positive and negative and run it out to these leads going down on the other side, which would basically tie the voltage of these together and give me a 24 volt panel system instead of a 12 volt. Doesn't mean I would get more charge power. The, the voltage would carry better to the charge controller over a long distance, but ultimately my amps at 12 volts would not change. There's still a certain amount of amps that these are gonna produce. For a small setup like this, the voltage of your panels is not that critical. The panels that have good reviews and seem like quality and fit, the configuration you're doing are pretty much all you need. Just have the leads coming out of one, coming out of the other, going into a Y connector to connect both those panels down to one wire, which connects to this cable that I bought. This is just PV cable, photo photovoltaic cable. All of this is stuff you can get online on Amazon, really easy. And if you do it that way, you might spend a little bit more, but that way you get all the connectors. You're not having to solder. I figure out where I want them. I attach the brackets to the panel, set it on here, mark all the holes. Then I come back and put mollies in each of those holes, drill them in, and you can see I put little beads of silicone on the top of each so that they don't leak into the camper. And you can see that I've got a big mess of silicone right here. Get down from here, I'll show you the charge controller, how I've wired it, and that we've got voltage. The work is mostly done. I didn't want to do a long video of like installing everything because your install is going to be a little different. The bottom line is get your parts, mount your panels, and I'll show you how easy it is to wire these up. What do you need to install solar? It's pretty straightforward. It's just the kind of stuff that you should already have in an RV anyways, because RVs always break. They're a house going down the freaking road. So you should have a drill, pliers. You're probably gonna need some wrenches to take off terminals, some wire strippers, always have those. You're always fixing wiring. And of course, a voltmeter, these little type here with the claw on the end that measures amps are also really useful. Uh, you'll probably also need a couple of these spade bits because you're gonna need to drill some larger holes when you go to uh, bring the wires down and things like that. And having the right tools makes it all so much easier. Solar system consists of solar panels, the wires and connectors to connect those solar panels to a charge controller, a charge controller, and wires to connect the charge controller to the batteries. That's, that's really all there is to it. There's not a lot of rocket science. We're keeping this one pretty simple. Uh, Here's the wires we looked at on the top that were coming from the pigtails of the combined two solar panels. I just have to run them to a charge controller. So at that point, it's just a matter of deciding where to put the charge controller into the right relation to the batteries. In my case, I decided to put it right down here, even though the positioning is kind of weird of all this electronic stuff underneath the sink cabinet, that's where all the main electrical connections are from the factory. 
Okay, so what have we done? I've ran the cable down from the top, and I just ran it down through the bottom of the cabinet. Normally, I like to run it completely inside, but because this is a camper and it's pretty small, there's not a lot of hollow spaces up here because, well, the camper stops here. This is the back of the truck. All of this is hanging over the top of the truck. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just wrap some uh, black conduit so this looks tidy. If I really wanted to, I could have used more wire and made it more complex and ran through cabinets and then back into here and down and behind the stove and then back into here. But that would have got me a lot longer wire. So I just opted for the simpler, not quite as elegant installation. It's coming down over here and you can see it right here. It's coming here. And where's it going? It's going right up to this charge controller. I got this fan running up here, all right? It's running faster than the camera makes it look like it's running. Okay, so if I put a voltmeter on this right here, you can see I'm gonna put one here on the negative, common negative block, and here on the common positive block. So basically the battery is running into this and then all the other main lines are running out from that. It's just a terminal block, okay? And you can see my battery is really low right now. I've got 9.79. Those are going into our little MPPT 15 amp charge controller into the PV, just a plus and minus coming down from our 12 volt panels, which actually in full sun are run running an open circuit of like 18, 19 volts, okay? So the reason we don't run those directly into the battery, we could, and it would charge the battery, but it would be prone to overcharging. So you wanna have a controller for that. What this does is we go into the controller, and then the controller converts everything to the right voltage for your battery. So you charge a battery at like 13 and a half, 14 volts, but with more, with, with more amps. The more amps, the better, right? We come out of the battery and then our negative from the battery output just goes into our negative common block. And I have all that I have left is our positive, which is right here coming out of the charge controller. I want you to listen to this fan because as I touch this, this is hot now. If I touch this, to the common positive. You can hear how that fan just ramped up because we went from having nine volts to full power. So I'm gonna hook this up properly by unscrewing the nut and connecting it. And we'll take a look at what our amperages and voltages are looking like. And we can see our voltage now is 13.25-ish, which means we're charging. Let's see how much we're charging. This is also an amp meter. So we got this here, if you put this around a positive or a negative wire, and I'll put it around the one we just put in. And we can see here, I gotta put it to the 20 amp mode. There we go, and DC, I have to switch it to DC. Okay, so we can see that we are now charging at a rate of nine amps coming through the wire out of the charger and into the battery wire. Some people would argue that I should not be running my charge wire from the controller into just the common block where the battery wire comes from, that I should actually take my charge cable from here and run it straight back to the battery. In this case, I don't see much benefit to that because the gauge wire is about the same and I would just be drilling extra holes and running extra wire. So that's why I did it the way I did. However, on my bigger installs, like in my bigger RV, yes, I did actually run to the charge controller, solar panel, charge controller, charge controller, straight to the battery bank because it's a lot larger system and I wanted as clean of a run with as large wires as was practical. This is basically just a standard car battery. Um, if we look here, we can see this battery, it was functionally dead and now we have DC of 13 volts, which of course doesn't mean the battery's charged, it's just that the solar power has brought the battery up to 13 and a half volts because we have all, all that power. We have 10 amps of charge coming in right now. Now the inverter is a separate beast. If I wanna put an inverter in, uh, especially one that uses, pulls a sizable amount of juice, I, I really don't wanna connect that to these wires in here. Yes, I could connect the wire to here and to the ground from the inverter and it would work. The problem is, an inverter pulls a lot of amps. So remember I told you we're charging at 10 amps right now from the solar panel, okay? But if I was pulling, an inverter converts 12 volts to 120 volts AC. So basically the voltage is higher and 1000 watts 
is, I'm rounding here, but you know, about 10 amps at 120, but it's converting up from 12. So a thousand watts, if I was actually pulling a thousand watts from this inverter, it will be pulling a hundred amps at 12 volts, more or less from the battery. In wire size, that wire is gonna heat up. It's also just gonna fail. Like it's not necessarily going to melt. The inverter is just not gonna get the amps that it needs and overload. Now, bear in mind, no matter how big your solar panel, you can't run a thousand watts off a single battery for more than, well, hardly any time at all, because the, the more amps you pull from a battery, the faster it discharges. I want a big wire for an inverter, and you can see the difference. Here's the PV wire that we were using. This works fine because we're bringing down 10, 15, 20 amps, right? But to be able to pull really high loads for an inverter, 500 watts, if I wanna pull 500 watts off the inverter, I, I wanna be able to not have that line loss. I don't want it heating up. So I think I'll place the inverter here, then run the cables back through, which means I'll need some longer cables, but I basically wanna gauge about like this. Now the charge controller is the brains of the operation. There's a couple, there's a uh, PWM, which is kind of the old school charge controller and these MPPT charge controllers, which are basically more computerized and supposed to be more efficient. You can do some research and what you pick is not a big deal. The basic controllers are really cheap. You can spend quite a bit more on an MPPT controller, particularly if you're talking about a large system. But this was still like, I think 60 bucks or something like that. It wasn't that expensive and it is, it takes good advantage of the power and it manages everything. It has all the charge management in, in it and everything on a higher level than most of your really cheap controllers. So you can do some research on the different types of charge controllers. And you can see here that this will handle up to 15 amps, which is just about right because 200 watts, if I was truly getting 200 watts of solar uh, going out at 12 volts or 13 to the battery, that would be right around 15 amps. Let's climb up on the roof of my 34 footer here with two slides. I mean, this one has a lot more lights, a lot more power, and we use it for bigger road trips. Look at that clean, clear Mexico sky. Okay, so here's the top of my 34 footer. You can see, again, walking gently, the panels are much bigger. These are 250 watt panels, and these are actually coming down. And again, you can see we're hooking up the cables which are stretched to their limit. They're just running out to these simple Y joints. I've actually put a little junction box on this one here because I have a lot of wire security camera antennas for the cellular booster and of course the PV wires and do use a full size ladder if you need it to be safe. So you can see that this is uh, double slide outs, bunkhouse, main bedroom up here. This is like a 34 footer. And we have lived in this for as long as like six months at a time. And the whole family, pretty comfortably, honestly. So this needs a lot more power. And we've gone to greater lengths in this one in terms of there's 500 watts of solar and it's actually set up so that we can run a thousand, uh, which I may add. We have an internal meter on this one uh, because the charge controller is in the front compartment. So in this case, we have an internal meter. Again, none of this is really complicated though. It's just a matter of running more wires and taking more time. A switch that actually switches from shore power to inverter. So the inverter is wired into the main power of the coach and 24 hours a day, even driving down the road, everything works in the coach just like as if you were plugged into shore. The principle's the same on this charge controller though, is the other one, it's just a larger MPPT and it's put up here, it's big. And you can see we also have this, uh, this nice sine wave inverter. And this is all wired in. In this case, what's happening, the solar wires are coming down, they're going inside the cabinets on the inside, running straight to the charge controller. And then the cables from the charge controller are going straight into here running underneath the underbelly and going right up to the batteries, which are right out here, okay? So in this case, because it's a larger install, a lot more wattage, we've gone solar panel, charge controller, charge controller straight to the batteries, not to any of the other integrated power systems. And ditto for the big inverter here, this big inverter and these huge cables right here. I think this is like double lot copper uh, is running in as shorter line as possible straight to our battery bank of four Trojan style six volt batteries. In some ways, if you were doing it on a house, it's even easier because you're not dealing with tiny spaces and things aren't moving down the road. But even there on your cabin or something like that, 
all the principles are the same. This is my little Lance uh, camper. I wanted something a little smaller than my big rig because the roads are small down in Mexico and sometimes I just want to go on short trips. Picked it up, I had it brought down from the States for about $10,000 and it actually got in an accident on the way down and got rear-ended. So we had to do a bunch of work and it's kind of been a process getting everything back in order and getting inspired by it again. This whole side like was hit. So everything here was completely smashed, but it actually didn't screw up the interior uh, fortunately. So it was just external work that had to be done on it. And we still need to get actually some new metal panels because you can see that it's a little dinged up. My dad actually did a lot of the straightening up. And then we went to a local body shop and some welders and stuff, and they built a brand new bumper for it and the whole works and we got it back on the road. But all right, guys, we have got power without any need for the outside world or fuel or anything like that. Self-contained off the grid from God's golden sun power. That is my favorite kind. Uh, we've got lights, power, fans, and that will charge all the time. In fact, on this little coach here, I even have 12 volt on the refrigerator that I just turned on and it will work. I did an amp check on this and it's pulling about 11 amps off of my batteries to run the fridge, which means that with my 200 watt solar panels in full sun, it'll produce 13, 14, 15 amps, I actually could run the refrigerator on electricity during the day and be seen theoretically a net gain. Realistically though, you don't usually get max output out of a solar panel. Like most days, it just isn't that good. If it's cloudy, you might get half or less. So generally speaking, even if I can run a fridge off electricity, it's nice to know I can do it but usually I'm just gonna keep it on gas if I have access to gas because it's gonna be more efficient. Just cleaning up in here, putting things away. So that is how I got solar going on this rig and a little look at how I have it installed on my other rig. And the best part is I can go out in the sticks with this. I can load this thing up with water and food and go on a road trip and I don't need to be plugged in. All I need is water and food. I don't need to rely on hookups and I can't emphasize this enough people buy an rv and largely for electricity they pay like these ridiculous 20 30 50 70 dollars a night to park an rv you might as well have a hotel at that point although your rv is more comfortable once you have it set up put solar on your rv it's so much quieter sure carry a generator if you if you're dealing with a big enough rig for this now nah, i won't need to carry a generator for my big rig, I carry a generator so I can run the air conditioner and things like that because it would take an enormous amount of solar to run the air conditioner. The main thing is the independence, the not having to fill generators with gasoline, the not having to listen to them, the not having to pay people outrageous prices just so you can plug in and use a little bit of their electricity. It makes you independent and it's worth it. And you know what? There's something along the way as you're building a solar system, all right? And by the way, this is a little MC4 wrench. Get a set of these with your connectors. Again, I'll link a bunch of this stuff in my video of this on YouTube, uh, but this will make putting your connectors on really easy. Now this thing self-maintains, that charge controller. There's no turning this on or off all the time. There's no coming out to say, oh, do I need to turn the solar on? They're just on. Now you can get fancy, you can get tilting solar panels to make them more efficient. People that are, for example, in Quartzsite, Arizona for six months of the year in one place do this. I installed tilting solar panels on my first solar install and honestly never used them because it was just crawling up there and I was usually not there for that long. And so set it up however works for you. And the process of setting it up is gonna help you understand that cracker box you're living in a little better, how the wires work, where things go, and help you learn to fix it. Because the one thing you wanna do if you have an RV and you wanna be independent and not paying people obscene amounts of money just to park and have repairs done while you wait for weeks, it's just to learn how to fix your RV. It's not rocket science. It's usually loose pieces, new parts that have broke that you can order off the internet, wires that you need to fix that have shaken loose. RVs overall are really simple and so is solar. So get in there, get it working and go camping. Not in a campground, but you know, in the wild. It's independent, it's off grid. It's a super camper now. And that is what counts. Please, please.